by your birth, purified us by your baptism, sanctified us by your crucifixion, reconciled us to the Father by your resurrection, raised us by your ascension, and adorned us with the gifts of your Spirit. Now, O Lord, accept our incense, and fill us all with your sweet fragrance, so that our tongue may never cease and give the thanks to you for it ever. Amen. Amen.
Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent to listen. <laughs>
given the people who were on that boat, and especially if that was the livelihood and they made a living off of fishing, why didn't they offer him to be their partner and have them get on the boat and go fishing with them from now on and get rich? Rather than leave the boat and follow him and not get rich. And I think that's a very significant question, especially today, when it's very obvious that there are some people who follow Jesus and preach his message specifically to get rich and promising the followers that they will get rich also. But there is absolutely no example in anything that Jesus ever said that that was one of his goals. In fact, when he was questioned about what it meant to be saved and they listed the things intellectually, he wanted to reach the heart and say, okay, then sell everything you have and give it to the poor. That is not an American message. Now I'm going to go back again to the first question regarding did he purposely not let the fish go in his net? And again, I'm not going to be able to answer that question because that's not the question that Jesus is trying to ask us and that's not the answer he's looking for in our own life. It's just simply a fact that no matter how much you have, no matter how wonderful you might look, no matter how famous you are, you can't stop that emotion and that feeling and that sense that there is still some emptiness in our life. If that wasn't the case, we wouldn't constantly read in the newspaper or magazines that some famous, successful actor or musician or politician or somebody has committed suicide or struggles with depression or drug addiction. They say that some of the poor among the Americans, especially the Latinos, rate higher in their happiness than most others, regardless of their uh, economic stature, because of the deep commitment they have to each other as family, who they have confidence and trust in that they will be there for them no matter what they're going through. And I think if you examine your own life and think about your own family and the families around you, that you are the most happiest and the most joy-filled when you are at peace with the people that are closest to you, yourself and your family. And when you feel the most tortured, the most anxiety and anger and difficulty is when you're trying to work out a relationship with a family member, even if they're not alive still. It shows how very deeply, intricately we are a community. Peter already was shown in his leadership by saying, you want to go fishing? And they said, oh yeah, sure, we'll go. And the absolute amazement when the net was filled. Now I can imagine some people in the same experience telling Jesus it's none of his business what they're doing and how they're doing it and why they're doing it. That they don't mind any kind of relationship with God that would have any impact on their behavior. And the emptiness that they might be dealing with and trying to find, whatever high they're looking for, is not going to involve the advice and the teaching of Jesus Christ. It's going to come from their own life and their own heart or the influence of somebody that they admire. They're not seeking the advice an example of someone who's going to make their life better for the rest of their life, but only for the moment. And all of these things are part of the considerations of what's going on here. How long would Christianity last if they just stay in the boat and say, yeah, he's a nice guy, and we have sandwiches here, but we don't need any of his bread, and we really don't need his fish, we have plenty for ourselves. Or he really can't expect us to do this. 
harder to do it also, the less likely there will be any interest in caring about what's the dilemma of the Christians that are suffering elsewhere. Or even being willing to evaluate that unless they are a Christian of their own tradition here in America, that they don't have the same value. So these ancient churches that were established since the time of Christ and have these elaborate rituals and prayers, they aren't really actually Christians and actually if you want to raise money, we'll try to convert them to some other form of Christianity. But here we are, pondering all the different things of how people's minds think and why they do what they do. And we each come from a different direction and a different set of emotions and a different set of feelings. What is the right thing to do when we discover that we can't get rid of the emptiness in all the ways that we try? And maybe we are a very joyful person under many circumstances. But what is going to happen to the world? What is going to happen to the world around us when we treat Christianity differently than what Jesus himself treated us. He truly believed with his very life that this was a message that could transform each person's life and the world around us. And if the world around us is not being transformed for the better, and our own personal lives are not being transformed for the better, it's not his fault. He doesn't try to make sure our nets are empty so that we would desperately need them. Sometimes we empty our own nets by mistreating the environment, by poisoning the world around us, by not having the commitment and the maturity to handle life as it needs to be handled in this world. We become so focused on our own needs that we don't realize that sometimes only focusing on our own needs is what could destroy the planet economically and physically and emotionally and psychologically. And if you don't believe me, you might as well just quit reading the newspapers because it says so every single day. These men came ashore, and they didn't choose to try to get Jesus to be their partner, but they chose to be his partner.
Oh, 